My name is Kendra Grubb. I am a cardiac surgeon at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. I am the surgical director of the Structural Heart and Valve Center at Emory. Well, the importance of it was to really understand um, not only how patients were feeling who had valvular heart disease and get an understanding of their, um, their perception of their disease, but also those things that were important to them. Was it important to get information on the internet versus have a conversation with their doctor? And then how their life changed after their surgeries. Um, I think that this was particularly important during the COVID era because, you know, frankly, we have so many patients who are fearful of even coming to the hospital. And so trying to understand how patients are feeling, what their experiences are, um, I think is really powerful right now. And it gave us a lot of great information. Well, the important part was that there were over 3,000 patients um, surveyed. And I think some of the key takeaways was that um, patients need to seek early treatment. And um, you know, over, almost half of patients really felt like they wanted to return to normal life. And that was, that was their driver. Um, you know, 80, over 80%, you, they, they felt like exercising again um, and, and going back to work and traveling and those things that they love to do were really the reasons that they needed to have their valvular heart disease treated. Um, and, and interesting, the biggest portion of their decision-making had to come with the conversation with their doctor. Um, and I think that 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 conversation, that ability to understand their disease process, as well as the treatment options for that individual patient, that idea of shared decision-making was very empowering for these patients. They found that patients with valvular heart disease, they wanted to get back to active living. Um, again, you know, almost 50%, that was their main driver for um, wanting to have treatment. Um, also noted was that um, they, many patients, this was very interesting, many patients wished they would have gone to a doctor earlier. Almost 30% wished they would have gone to a doctor sooner. And I wanna revisit that because this is a really important piece of it, um, but I'll circle back to that. Um, and again, 90% felt that conversation with their doctor was important. So circling back on that early treatment, there's a problem with valvular heart disease, and I'm gonna specifically hone in on aortic stenosis. Aortic stenosis is one of the most prevalent valvular heart disease in the United States. It is underreported and undertreated. And so if we think that only 40 or even 50% of the patients who have severe aortic stenosis, so that's the patients who actually have the disease, less than half are even being sent to a center to even discuss their treatment options, already we have a problem. So what ends up happening is that a patient is followed by a primary care physician or by a cardiologist. They might or might not have some symptoms. And the critical symptoms that we're looking for, number one is shortness of breath. That's a sign of congestive heart failure. So shortness of breath, congestive heart failure has the worst prognosis with aortic stenosis. And those patients who actually have severe aortic stenosis and their presentation is with shortness of breath um, or um, dyspnea on exertion, so they try to exercise and they get shorter breaths quicker than they should, 50% of those patients will die within two years if they're not treated. So this is really serious. We have to start thinking of this almost like cancer of the heart. It's not cancer, but it is a progressive disease. So these patients, they end up presenting and they get an echocardiogram and it may or may not meet criteria. There are very specific criteria for aortic stenosis. But once they meet that criteria, or even when they're close, they need to be sent to a center that actually does the treatment, which in this case would be transcatheter aortic valve replacement or TAVR or surgery. The third option is medical therapy. And medical therapy is really only reserved for those patients who are too old, too frail, too sick. And those are few, few, few and far between. Medical therapy is also always the first line 
So we're going to control your blood pressure. We're going to control the fluid overload. We're going to control your symptoms, but it is not going to slow down the aortic stenosis, which is tightening of the main outflow valve as calcium, calcium forms on the valve leaflets. And so one of the problems that we have and what was highlighted in this is that patients wished they sought treatment sooner. And part of that comes from the diagnosis process. When we do an echocardiogram on a patient, it is at rest. And sometimes we're not loading the heart enough to be able to get the numbers for it to be quote unquote severe aortic stenosis. So the patient's having symptoms. They notice that they can't do the things that they could do a year ago. They can't climb two flights of stairs. They're now only able to walk a couple of blocks where last year they were all able to go out and walk a mile with their friends. Those are signs that the patient is getting worse, but our tool to identify aortic stenosis is an echocardiogram done with them laying on a stretcher. And so it's hard to mimic that same level of exertion while we are doing our echocardiogram as our screening tool. So there are patients that really are having the symptoms, they really have the disease, but the tool that we use isn't quite sensitive because of how we do it. So if that patient was to be sent to, let's say my center at Emory, we would exercise them. We would do an exercise stress test. We would do an exercise echocardiogram, excuse me. And that would show us with exercise, whether or not it looks like that patient actually has severe aortic stenosis. So that's a treadmill test. And um, it's, it, it actually finds, especially in our younger, lower risk patients who are very well compensated, that they actually do have severe aortic stenosis. And it gives us the opportunity to talk with those patients about their treatment options and, and what they want done. And I think that that's one of the things that this highlighted, that patients felt like they wished they had the opportunity to get back to life, to do the things that they wanted to do, to travel again, to work, to exercise sooner. And they were being sent too late or they waited too long to see a physician that could really help them. Well, I think that you know one of the things that this survey does is it, is it educates patients. And I think that that's the main thing. As mentioned, you know, aortic stenosis is underdiagnosed and undertreated. So if, if your doctor is telling you you have a murmur, a murmur is just the sound. It's the swishing sound the blood makes as it goes through the valve. Shoo, shoo. That murmur needs to have a reason. A murmur is not a diagnosis. A murmur is just the sound we hear. And so I think that for patients to be educated about the fact that, no, I don't just have a murmur. I have a murmur because it is aortic stenosis or some other reason for a murmur is really important. And so that education piece that the patient is informed of why they have a murmur and what that murmur means, and then what's the plan for follow-up. And I do believe that patients, once they're kind of in the moderate, moderate to severe range, even without symptoms, should really be sent to a center that specializes in valvular heart disease and provides both options for open surgical treatments as well as the transcatheter options. These patients um, can be treated earlier and then we don't have to wait until they are suffering or and the un unfortunate thing that can happen is that their actual ventricular function, their heart pump function starts to deteriorate. We don't have to wait till then. We can follow them more closely in a structured, monitored um, setting and figure out when the right time is to fix their valve so that we can make them feel better and help them live longer. Well, for practicing clinicians, I think that if you are out in the community and you have patients with murmurs, get an echo, um, figure out exactly what's going on. Um, send them early, send them to a cardiologist to be followed, send them to a valve center to be followed or at least evaluated. Um, in addition to um, the commercially available devices, there are also many trials available to patients who may not have the traditional criteria, but may very well benefit from treatment. And so we're studying those patients. And there are so many opportunities now for patients to get treatment early, to feel better sooner, that I think that the biggest thing is that the patients need to be educated on their disease process 
and the physicians caring for them need to send them to a center that offers all of the treatment options for valvular heart disease.